This is my survivor, a firefighter named Darren. His journey began in Durker Dam where he was bitten three times. But the second one doesn't really count because he was already infected. I managed to survive thanks to the vaccine mod by Kerahus. It was a desperate race against time, especially with the prone to disease trait that I always take. But I was able to cure myself, twice. But enough with the backstory. We'll be picking up Darren's journey and over the river because most of the Durker Dam footage has been lost. Suffice it to say, four months on and some 40,000 zomboids later, Durker Dam was thoroughly conquered. All that was left to do was to pack up the murder bus and head south. So I did. I arrived on the outskirts of Over the River late at night on the 24th of November, 134 days since the apocalypse started. It was on my very first day in Over the River that things began to get spicy. It all started when I first noticed that the zomboids seemed to be heading north in a coordinated grouping. I decided to follow them to see what was up and was absolutely horrified by what I saw. The horde was forming that was so massive that some of the zomboids would show only in silhouette. Keep this for a second. Oh my god, what the fuck? Oh my god, your game's lagging now. Yeah, because I have so many zombies on my screen that... Dude, you gotta get out of there. Danger, danger. Oh, dude, don't get, don't get trapped in there, bro. Are you gonna mount down, dude? They don't want to catch the smoke. Hell yeah, dude. You get to the point of the zombies running from me. This is so fucked, though. Tried a few times to find positioning from which I could potentially take the fight to this ungodly horde. Realizing the neighborhood. <laughs> Like, if I could get a shot on them, or they fucking stopped. Give me Jennifer. Things began to get really scary when I almost got stuck in the truck by the swarms of bodies on the road. The dog's going crazy. The thing about these hordes is they will hone in on you for Fucking god, what the fuck is this? Get out of there!
bus to prepare and to potentially get a nap in before the hostilities really started. But no, the Zeds would not allow that. I wanted to put some distance between me and the bear bus's location because I didn't want it to get overran. If I was forced out of the area, it would be a death sentence to try to escape through grass in a bus that was swamped by Zeds. got back into town, things didn't necessarily seem impossible, but it would quickly become evident that making a stand would be hopeless. We'd take the fight to them on the main road that led to the stadium, but I would be forced to concede ground again.
Despite the scare I had the night before, things had appeared to settle down. Day 137 was the beginning of the long effort to chew through the massive Zed population that had been waiting for me and over the river, made even worse by the storm, which had amassed them in an apocalyptic nightmare-sized horde. It became clear I had no choice but to fight and kill them by the thousands, if I had any hopes of taking in the sights of this unfamiliar wasteland. In the days to come, I would use everything at my disposal, firearms explosives and especially noise whether it was the siren of an ambulance or simply the sound of an engine revving music and noisemakers the sound of gunshots explosions and yelling anything to corral disrupt and destroy the zeds with the greatest efficiency i could imagine Suffice it to say, day 137 was entirely spent in combat. By the end, I had probably spent at least a thousand rounds of various munitions, including a good chunk of my prized 40 millimeter high explosive rounds. If I was gonna conquer this town, I would have to up my game. So that night I started disassembling electronics and making noisemakers. Hopefully these would allow me to gather the Zeds into tighter, more vulnerable hordes in the future. At the end of the night, I retired to the bear bus to prepare for the next day and to get some rest. Day 138 was another day spent almost entirely devoted to combat, so I'm going to reduce it down to one representative engagement of the day's fighting and let it play. Build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper Anxiety filling up every space, no privacy And silently it could build and build until you find the seat Whoa, it's taking over, damn no closure, moving closer No exposure, I just wanna be a loner uh, Some can't stay sober, looking over all their shoulders like moving boulders just to get out of the home It sucks, I've had enough I don't wanna feel the stuck Under the rug, all my problems that I shove I got nightmares in my head I fear that the thoughts build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper I got nightmares in my head I fear Thoughts build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper I've been feeling weird, I can't seem to focus good enough Nothing's really clear, sometimes it could be a little tough I just need to feel like the end's in sight for me But let's be really real, anxiety can foggy all this stuff I've been feeling weird, I can't seem to focus good enough Nothing's really clear, sometimes it could be a little tough I just need to feel like the end's in sight for me But let's be really real, anxiety can foggy yeah. all this stuff It sucks when you finally feel like giving up Oh God, no luck Everything feels like you're sticky stuck I'm lost, handcuffed To the bed where I sleep, don't give a fuck Can't stop, unplug Feeling overwhelmed, I think I've had enough uh, Gotta find a way to get some energy Gotta find someone who's a good friend of me I need purpose to make it all worth it I'm still searching and I'm still learning What a life is filled with memories Not a life with a grand in front of me I need focus to keep me from hopeless Psychosis if I keep moping I got nightmares in my head I feel Thoughts build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper I got nightmares in my head, I fear That the thoughts build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me
haunts me somewhere much deeper I've been feeling weird, I can't seem to focus good enough Nothing's really clear, sometimes it could be a little tough I just need to feel like the end's in sight for me But let's be really real, anxiety can foggy all this stuff I've been feeling weird, I can't seem to focus good enough Nothing's really clear, sometimes it could be a little tough I just need to feel like the end's in sight for me But let's be really real, anxiety can the next day I had neglected to hit record until it was late, but I spent most of the day in the shipping containers anyways. In truth, they contained plenty of valuable loot and I would visit them often to replenish ammo or whatever random odds and ends I might need. After that though, I finally got some time to check out the neighborhood. I found a great magazine that would allow me to craft and improve noisemakers, which I was happy to find so quickly. I also found a Twinkies truck, but it was empty. Apparently, Tallahassee had already been there. I didn't really need the loot, at least not at that moment, but I searched the houses anyway to take stock of what was there and make little notations on my map. This is how I really get to know the places that I visit. That night, I felt safe enough to sleep in the neighborhood, so I did. Leaving a little table in the hallway as some sort of half-assed obstruction on the off chance any zombies might walk in on me. of working my way up through the neighborhood. There were more houses to clear, more zomboids to kill, and more map notations to make. excited to find a large warehouse on the north end. When I got there though, I was surprised to see there was still a good number of zomboids in the area. And there would be in the same area for a long time, no matter how many of them I killed. Which was in itself a recurring theme for my time in Over the River. I would often think, oh I've killed so many zomboids, made so much noise, there couldn't possibly be any more around, only to be surprised by some horde barreling down on me like Tallahassee on that Twinkie truck. Anyways, after dealing with the first horde outside of this warehouse, I went inside and was a little disappointed to see it was kinda empty. I supposed it must have been a Twinkie storage shed if Tallahassee beat me there too. Nonetheless, I was still excited to find something super important there, which is Project Zomboid's true post-apocalyptic sustainable water source, the ever-ubiquitous water dispenser. I don't always drink water, but when I do, it's from a water dispenser. Stay thirsty, my friends. Like I was saying earlier, when I came out of the warehouse, I was surprised to see another well-sized group of Zomboids nearby. At this point, I was getting a little fatigued, so I grouped them up as best as I could and used a round for my ever-diminishing stock of 40 Mike Mike.
noise makers and begin a persistent new fascination with hat trip. Day 141 once again saw me fighting the same words for the same piece of real estate I thought I had already won. But overnight the Zeds had retaken it for their own. Even so, today felt like a victory because my guerrilla campaign against them was able to handle large groups of Zeds with relative ease and efficiency, which is something I always enjoy. Day 141 once again saw me fighting the same words for the same piece of real estate I thought I had already won, but overnight the Zeds had retaken it for their own, which is something I always enjoy. Even so, today felt like a victory to me because my gorilla combination of both noise and grenade launcher came together very nicely. I was able to handle large groups of Zeds with relative ease and efficiency. One of the things about Zomboid is that it can become quite tedious. makers in the houses of the neighborhood to break line of sight and force them into concentrated groupings ripe for the grenade launcher. And that's what I was able to do today. situation was like. I still happened to have 20 high explosive rounds in stock, which ordinarily would sound like a lot, but in over the river I was running through them like Emmett Smith through the Redskins. I retrieved my mobile noise maker, the white truck, with the Michael Jackson playing and pulled up to the stadium. Apparently a care package had dropped by the mobile homes, so I went to check it out. toilet paper and fishing line, so I returned my attention to the Zeds that had gathered around the truck in the meantime. I wasted a couple of high explosive rounds on the board and realized I was out, so I decided to take a break and headed back to the bus to see what the ammo situation was like. I still happened to have 20 high explosive rounds in stock, which ordinarily would sound like a lot, but in over the river I was running through them like Emmett Smith through the Redskins. Anyway, after I had restocked and reloaded, I headed back out to continue fighting the dead for the rest of the evening. And I started chipping away at the zombies defending the stadium.
flying around. I returned home to pack some mags, get drunk, and experiment even more with my hat trip, and some other trip if we're being honest. I returned home to pack some mags, get drunk, and experiment even more with my hat trip, and some other trip if we're being honest. of the previous day and really the entire week it was time for a little more of a chill homie vibes day also it was time to restock it wasn't that i was out of ammo but i was surprised to find myself actually running low considering how much i brought with me but as hot and heavy as the fighting had been i blew my load in almost the first week alone and began dipping into my reserves now i don't like dipping into my reserves if i can help it when I have a cabinet full of ammo, I like to keep a cabinet full of ammo. That said, I really did need to find some 12 gauge. It's easily the most important ammo in the apocalypse and I was in danger of running out. Sure, Britta's rifles are good and the grenade launchers absolutely eat, but the 12 gauge is Mr. Reliable. Of course, the superloaded shipping containers did have the 12 gauge, so I was happy. Aside from that, it was a nice change of pace to simply browse the many different guns and attachments and other paraphernalia in the shipping containers without having to worry about Zeds for once. I got to forget my troubles for a while while I went cross-eyed attempting to decipher the endless walls of text in the user interface. It was about 3 p.m. in the afternoon when I finally finished with the shipping containers, and the next chill homie vibes item on the itinerary was to dismantle some vehicles. It would be nice to get them out of the way, and I could and would use the metal later, but most importantly I like having my driving routes clear, at least of car wrecks, if not of bodies. After that, even though I had gained access to the stadium, I was still scared to go inside. So I laid a noisemaker in the hallway in the hopes of drawing out any Zed still loitering inside. Then I left to check the situation on the far side of the stadium. There was a battalion of the Jamuk army out there threatening to threaten my chill homie vibes day and make it a not chill homie vibes day. So I had to kill them and kill them hard in the name of the chill homie vibes day. I was taking it easy today, god damn it. Oh well. I figured, incorrectly I might add, that I would probably have easy access to the stadium the following morning. Then I drifted through the parking lot in search of vehicle drip. Now there wasn't anything particularly trippy in the lot, but the ambulance of course would come in handy. Anyways, seeing the Southside Stadium Zeds entertaining the idea of enforcing my curfew, I decided to beat a chill homey retreat to the other side the safer side of the stadium and maybe book a room at the local B&B for the evening. But before
before moving into my room, I checked out the attached garages, loot horror that I am, noting that there was a generator present, as well as other industrial goodies, and I decided I might as well use one of these garages as a place to store my own loot in town and free up some space in the truck bed. Anyways, it was a long, chill, homey day, but I still wanted to peep the neighborhood a little bit. No matter how chill, homey vibes a day it was, due diligence was an ever-present requirement of the apocalypse. So before I could go to sleep, I would put some sheets up on my windows, metal and linen, and put a recliner against the door, which was all due diligence really required. It was a little scuffed, but I was safe to sleep for the night. Remember when I said I would have easy access to the stadium? Well, when I first showed up, that was actually true. But something about the apocalypse always makes me uneasy going into buildings. Like a horde's gonna come out of nowhere and cut me off. Even if that hardly ever happens, I'm always weary. So I went back outside to dilly-dally and satisfy my paranoia. Then I hot-wired the survivor vehicle I had checked out the night before. As it turned out, my paranoia was justified when this rather large horror came sauntering out of the woods looking to eat me. They would be even more numerous than they appeared at first which was already pretty numerous. Not a bridge. 
register too deeply though because I decided to loiter around the parking lot and take a quick peek inside the stadium. I think I just wanted to finally see for myself what all the fuss had been about. As it turns out, the stadium was some sort of survivor holdout. Now I knew I didn't have the time to linger and do a full tour. Those Zeds moving north were somewhere in the back of my mind. It was around 8.30 that night when I saw more Zeds heading north and I had the creeping certainty that another storm board was indeed forming. So I took the ambulance to investigate.
this was the last of them. But as is so often the case, it wasn't the last of them at all. Some had wandered off, others were lingering in the shadows. Turning the siren back on would bring them around once more. I spent a few extra hours thoroughly finishing off the last of the Zed army before finally calling it a day. Complete, it was time to claim the spoils of victory. 
victory, which meant I was free to take a tour of the stadium, which turned out to be a fallen survivor base. Oh, oh. look, these guys are trapped behind this. Fucking down there. Dirty bastards swapping spit. I have this really cool gun right here. Mm. It's like an automatic rifle body without the stock on it. And you can in with like. It must have some sort of barrel, but it doesn't have like a regularly sized barrel, so it's like. It's like an M4 rifle that operates like a machine gun, or a pistol, I mean. So it's like also a pistol that operates like a machine gun. It's great. It is. Yeah, very interesting. <laughs> what the fuck? It's so cool. But that's that's the kind of thing, like, you can only get with this one, you know? Oh my god, what is this? It's just a saw. So they had... Yeah. Had, they had this cornfield going on here. Mm -hmm. And this is like in some sort of stadium. They had these metal fucking tin uh, buildings people were living in. All this shit. Wow. Do they have ammonia? I don't even know why I'm asking, they're dead. Of course, they don't have ammonia. I don't think I, I, think I found like one thing of ammonia on this trip. But I'm gonna need more. I'm never gonna actually create like the permanent cure. You would want me to do that, right? Of course. You can get bit enough. At least it'd be useful. Fuck you, bitch. <laughs> After the tour, a mood-appropriate fog had descended upon the town, and I found a well-stocked gun range overflowing with guns and ammunition, including a fully loaded minigun that would come in handy down the road. celebrities and shit. Yeah. So it's not that far-fetched, in my humble opinion. After that, I ventured into the nearby homes. I noticed that the garages tended to be really loaded and over the river. And unlike the houses in the Lower West Side, these ones tended to have some loot. Coming out of the second house, I was ambushed in the fog by a group of Zeds who had somehow yesterday's action. This was the first sign that the area wasn't really as clear as I had thought it was. The second sign came at the gas station. I guess there were more sets and over the river than I had anticipated.
That is so post-apocalyptic of me. Yeah, it's a, it's a, yeah, a little bit. There's definitely people who know more about Lord of the Rings than I do, but I'm, Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter are those two things I know way too much about. <laughs> yeah, Nathan thought it'd be a fun idea to play that game with me. Nothing. Thirst quenched, it was time to take on the remnants outside the gas yeah. station. street interview when you were obviously drunk. She's, she sucks a little dick, you know? What can I say? I feel like I can say a lot of things. She sucks a little dick, you know? That's all. Like, you know? She's 
she wants to suck mine, I'll probably tell her no because uh -huh. I'm waiting for marriage, but... You are such a fucking liar. Oh my god, I hate you. You beat me, me. Shut up. Eventually, I left base and visited a rundown strip mall on the eastern edge of town. I felt like it was a location with an appropriate post-apocalyptic atmosphere. After that, it was time to test out the MP5. You think he should be cancelled off of your here, No, I'm saying they should stop cancelling Matt Wolf for saying actual facts and then not touching anything else. <laughs> what the hell is going on? <laughs> Well, it didn't turn out to be my favorite gun. I certainly enjoyed the way combat and Project Zomboid can be so very cinematic sometimes. Afterwards, I went to my room to read in the dark. Then I decided I might as well plug in the generator that was already there and make the end my official base for Over the River. I said to my brother earlier I should name myself Content Retard. <laughs> oh my god. That's funny. <laughs> and he goes, that's a good name for real. <laughs> it is a good name, it just it wouldn't make it past the filter. Yeah. It's too much of a pussy now. Yeah. For day 149, I wanted to test out this really cool custom AKM I had found. And it did not disappoint. It had a really nice sound to it, and it drops it. It's like nobody's business. After coming to terms with the neighborhood watch, I spent some more time clearing houses and listening to Matt Walsh with flow before getting the bejesus scared out of me. Oh, that is such a sad last name. Why would you add that so depressing? What? <laughs> Judge Mingledorf. What the fuck is that? Dude, sometimes I don't be believing these last names are real. <laughs> right? Snow shot. Judge Curry Mingledorf. How is his name Curry Mingledorf? First name Curry. First name Curry. <laughs> So get this, I think I've mentioned this to you before, but the Amber Heard's lawyer was last name Rottenborn. Yeah. It's like, bro, this stuff is too on the nose to not be scripted, like what? Like, are we in the simulation? Yeah. He's fucking with us right now. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> I, that really scared the fuck out of me. No, like I, my heart, yeah, like I feel yeah. the fear in my body, like that was, that scared the fuck out of me. Yeah, that scared the fuck out of me. It just goes to show, no matter how experienced a survivor you are, there are still those oh shit moments, especially when you start to feel in control of the situation, and a false sense of security begins to creep in. After allowing my heart rate to return to normal and my cheeks to unclench, I rounded out the evening with a little more exploration. First, I took a lovely stroll through an empty hospital. But I was disappointed that there wasn't any ammonia in stock. Then I went next door to the school, which was also largely empty, so I didn't get to do my best America in the early 2000s impersonation. The night still being young, I continued looting the neighborhood. Then I found a house that was just loaded with loot. But what I was really excited for was to find a sleeping bag, which I decided to use then and there and pull an all-time zomboy classic by sleeping next to a toilet. God, I hope the real apocalypse isn't like this. Day 150 began with filling up the truck from one of the many gas barrels sitting around over the river. No gas station needed. Next, I found my 
myself looting the pharma hub, which didn't really have anything I needed. I'm really just on the hunt for ammonia, which is a bottleneck for the vaccine recipes. Afterwards, I took a bath in the Ohio River, as God intended. Then I spent more time looting gun stuff. Back at base, I sorted the loot from the previous couple days, and I installed a radio so I could listen to the weather and pretend I was less alone than I really was. Day 151 kicked off with me flaming flow for eating spicy Cheetos and then listening to her explain what clean girl aesthetic is. If it helps with spicy chips, so I'm like kind of dying, but I like them. Good. You should die for eating spicy chips, you fucking degenerate. Have you heard of clean girl aesthetic? Oh, I like the sound of that. Aesthetic. Like, what, okay, you what do you I think want, that is? What, you think I want a dirty bitch? Come on. Yes. Like, physically unclean? Like, who wants that? I don't think that's really what that means. Clean girl. Granted, I do think that a lot of these clean girl aesthetic things are like doing your skincare like seven times a day. Yeah. Cool. Go on. I'm, I'm yeah. halfway there. Obsessively washing your hands anytime oh you like, just leave, leave your house. Am I the only one getting excited right now? Afterwards, I spent the day swamped in the perusal of gun loot. Well, I have a fucking RPG. Yeah, I need you to hand that over to me, thanks. I think I need to test it out. For the evening, I decided to look through even more gun loot. Yeah, buddy. So I have a minigun with, there was a magazine loaded for the minigun already, 300 bullets. Oh my gosh. It's pretty hot. Who ever needs that kind of gun? You never need that kind of gun. Ever, ever, ever. You heard of the zombie apocalypse? Fucking libs. With the last week being as chill as it was, I was beginning to get the itch for some action. But that'd have to wait for tomorrow. It was already late, and I had some crops to plant. And I could build a well. I would need to probably rob a cemetery again, but... Great. It's always great when you do that. What? When you rob cemeteries. I don't mind. <laughs> Jeez. The plan for the day of December 11th really only consisted of two things. Stopping oh, by the Zomboid supermarket to find a knife of some Jeez. sort. Preferably a hunting knife so I could cut the Zomboid bread I had found. And testing out the cold single action mm -hmm. army. I only had one box of ammo, so I wasn't planning on going too crazy, but today turned out to be a really good day for combat. After taking care of my basic human needs like eating chips out of a zomboid's pocket and drinking water from a gas can, I set out to find something to shoot. And it didn't take long to find something. That's when it occurred to me. Why not use the minigun? Welcome to my party, we're just getting started A life is a dream or a nightmare scarring Hand me a drink cause I think I'm going all in Get me a shrink, who can catch me when I'm falling? Cover up my scars, flip the handlebars Crashing in my car, wake up in a bar So I'm taking six shots till I'm feeling okay I think I'm going crazy Don't think I'll get on set So I'm taking six shots all straight to the face I'm taking six shots, are you coming with me? I'm taking six shots, get yeah, straight to the face And I wanna get lost, I'm sick of this place Don't know how to stop when I'm feeling this way So I'm taking six shots till I'm feeling okay I think Sometimes you need to let loose, grab juice, get goose, tattoos, tattoos, get 
Texas, but we know calculus. Damn, ain't that fabulous? Can't wait to apply all those mathematicus. But we can't get a job that pays us enough. I'm about to pop up. Fuck you, you're lost. We all know that we never really want a boss. So I'ma do what I want to. Something I can't undo. Yeah, I'ma do what I want to. Something I can't undo. Six shots, yeah, straight to the face And I wanna get lost, I'm sick of this place Don't know how to stop when I'm feeling this way So I'm taking six shots till I'm feeling okay I think I'm going crazy Don't think I'll get on set So I'm taking six shots all straight to the face I'm taking six shots, are you coming with me? I'm taking six shots, yeah, straight to the face And I wanna get lost, I'm sick of this place Don't know how to stop when I'm feeling this way Charlie Kirk makes the, the, the argument that college is a scam and he gets up there, he's like, So do you think Christianity's a scam? Like, what the fuck are you on about, man? <laughs> These are two different arguments. <laughs> it's kind of a scam. Which is a whole different conversation. Like, <laughs> what, the fuck? what the fuck do you mean? Just because yeah, they don't think might... gender studies is a real degree doesn't mean anything else. Sorry about that, guys. Anyways, after blowing some time reading about blunt weapon recipes, like this chain-wrapped bat, I fully spent the entire morning looking for some AS Val I thought I had brought home. The Val happens to be one of my favorite guns from Escape from Tarkov, so I wanted to give it a shot here in Project Zomboid. As it turned out, I had not brought the Val home with me at all. So I had to retrace my steps to the various gun caches around town until I found it. Ha -ha. Having found it, I went back to base to get it ready. But then I got bogged down again with my need to organize and killing some trees getting in my way. Yeah. After that, I went back to the site of yesterday's combat and spent some time looting the zombies. And since you're okay with God being genderless, but not like regular human beings, it somehow means you're transphobic. <laughs> Shut the hell up, bro. Anyways, I like to loot big groups of zomboids by putting their valuables inside of bags that I find and leaving them nearby. They're kind of like little caches for weapons or cigarettes or any other random item that I don't necessarily need to bring back to base, but might come in handy when I'm passing by. Eventually, I went into the warehouse that this group of zomboids had been defending and found out that it was chock full of even more guns and ammo. I decided this area was probably some sort of military outpost. Afterwards, I returned home to do my usual nightly routine once again. Futz around with my loot, make something to eat, and actually even read a tiny bit of electrical knowledge while in three. And then I took some notes on the map before going to bed. Day 164 began with another drive through a glorious wasteland of corpses. 
I keep thinking that, with everything that's gone down, I've already conquered this town. But every so often I'm reminded that the fight isn't over. Seeing that horde of Zeds, I decided I would focus on the residential area instead, where there was less resistance. Thereby beginning the days long process of systematically clearing the area. Contemplation room right here. There's a room with nothing in it except for a chair in this house. Okay, that's fucking sketch. Where the this fucking house did I just break into? I don't know. You know? Like the fuck? You'd be breaking into some weird people's houses from time to time. Yep. And those and they're gonna get you. They're gonna get you. Get me where? You don't wanna not know. in my special place. Only Jesus yep. touches me there. Yep. Exactly there. Thousand kills. 
that and some reflections on when people sing. Well, you know, my survivors almost killed 50,000 zombies. And it was funny as I hate when other people sing. I know. But the problem is they always try to sing good, and maybe they even do sing good, and that's what's annoying. <laughs> In the background, I was preparing for an all-out assault on the military base. So after casually enjoying a warm orange soda from the truck bed, it was time. It exists. Route? Like yeah, the construction? Like